Hello, welcome to this video. If you're going to file your tax return on QuickBooks Online, make sure you watch this video to make sure that you have everything in place before you press that file button. My name is Aaron Patrick, Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer and also that QuickBooks chat. One of the great features of QuickBooks Self-Employed and also a sneak peek as an upcoming coming to QuickBooks Online as well is the ability to file your tax return directly in the product. And that's great. The idea that you can put all the information into one product, make sure it's happy with it and send it off. Meaning you're compliant and meaning you've got everything you need to make sure HMRC is happy. Now, one of the features over at Boffix that we've done really well from and something that people really like from us is our ability to do a check of a QuickBooks license. And basically what that means is that we actually video just like we are now us going into your license, having a look at your numbers and giving you some feedback on if it's correct or not. And we do this to make sure that you're comfortable before you press that file button. We go through and we look and see if there's anything that might be missing, anything that doesn't look right, or anything we would expect HMRC to have issues with. Now that service is great, but what if you're looking to file a tax return today? Well, this video is designed to help make sure you're looking at the right areas at the right places just to have a look and see if everything's been included. So let's have a look now and let's have a look at how we can use QuickBooks to make sure that we're comfortable before we send off our tax return to HMRC. Let's have a look. When you first log into QuickBooks, it's gonna tell you a lot of information. And one of the things that I've seen mostly is that people get blind to this information. When you go in and look at this on a day-by-day -day basis, sometimes you forget that these little options are here. For example, it's asking me here that I've got 20 plus transactions to review. And that's really important. If I still have transactions to review, that means that QuickBooks are aware of that transaction, but it's not actually in QuickBooks at this point. So what I need to do is I need to go through and make sure those transactions have been put in. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna make sure we put those extra transactions into QuickBooks. So if you do have a 20 transactions review, whatever number it is, then make sure you do press the review now button, because that's gonna take you to your banking page I'm gonna tell you there are issues that need to be looked at. For example, anything that's bold means that tran transactions haven't been added to QuickBooks, therefore we need to do something about it. And what you need to do is each transaction should go business and personal and you should be splitting them if they need to be split. And your idea is that everything with a bold outline should be actually looked at. And one of your filter options at the top here is all your unreviewed transactions. And all of these transactions need to be dealt with before you even consider filing a tax return. Once you've gone back here, you need to make sure that all of these are finished off. And it's even gonna tell you that there's some items that need action. Items that need actions are transactions that have come through without looking at the bank account. So it's really useful to connect the bank account up, but that's only half the story. You're still gonna have cash expenses, any transactions that haven't gone through the bank itself. Well, remember you have that opportunity on your phone to just snap a receipt and, and have them. That's really useful and make sure you take advantage of it, but don't forget to also put them into the system. And that's what's happening here. It's telling me that I've got this transaction, it's read all the information for me, so I'm happy that the information's there, but it's not got all the information, so I just need to make sure that I, I update it accordingly. Make sure I've got it as business and job done. And at some point, you'll get to the point where you've actually reviewed all your transactions. Your next part is you need to complete your tax profile, making sure that you've put all the information in here that's gonna be relevant to you. One of the big ones is your estimated employment income. Really important that if you've got an employed income from elsewhere, you stick that information in. And then finally, bring in any transactions that are missing. Well, here it's really tricky to understand, but basically if I jump into my transactions here, and I just look at this data graph, you can see that it looks like there's something missing here. So my August transactions, for whatever reason, are missing. And this is crucial. Keep using that view there to understand if there's any jump, big jumps in anything that's going on. In this case, it looks like August has completely been omitted. And if that's the case, I need to scroll down to the August area find the month before and the month after and see at what point I'm missing data. 
At that point, I need to go to my bank, download those missing transactions and upload them accordingly. To upload them, I go to the top right hand corner over here and I go to import transactions. From here, I can then import the transactions as I need. Use this as a bit of a checklist, but at some point you'll find that you'll get to the point where then those areas have been completed and you'll get kick off your shoes and relax, you're all caught up. But just because you've gone through the checklist doesn't mean that everything's completed. At this point now, I need to use some common sense. I need to look at the data and I need to try and understand if everything's there that it should be. My first port call is this exact area here. Do I feel that these accounts here represent the figures that I've got? Or well, to me, that's a lot of money to having a credit card. So it looks like I may have made a mistake there. If I open up my cash accounts even further, it looks like most of those transactions are there, but it could be that there's something missing and it might be something I need to look at to make sure I'm happy with. But also keep an eye on these dates. These dates are a real good indication to let you know that everything's all in place. Make sure you've reviewed your mileage. Make sure that anything that is business related has been included because that's gonna be a nice little way of saving you some money. So make sure you go through and accept the ones that are business. And before you jump into your taxes, consider looking at your report. Your reports are really important to you. They're gonna let you know how things are going. So example, if I view this report here, this profit and loss, this gives me a chance to look at the transactions that I've got there and I can even drill down to the transactions that I need to. So in my example, it looks like my income's probably about right, it feels about right, but suddenly I've got all these extra costs in there that doesn't seem to be there. So for that, I can just jump into the costs and I can review them to make sure that I'm happy with these. Now, one thing I would highly stress at this point, the amount of data going through this sample company to me suggests we're on the wrong version of QuickBooks. If you have more than say 10 transactions a day, even 10 transactions a week, I would seriously consider looking at a different alternative. I look at QuickBooks Online, the full version. We've got plenty of videos showing you the difference between the two of them, but I would highly recommend it. What QuickBooks Self-Employed is designed for is for people that don't have many transactions. They don't have that many transactions going through. Therefore, it's really easy to review each individual transaction to find it. When we're looking at it from this point of view, we don't have all the tools and everything else that's in place. What we have on the full version of QuickBooks is gonna give us proper accuracy. So think about before we go any further, are you on the right version of QuickBooks? And if you're not, don't worry, the guys over at Boffix can match whatever you're paying for whatever subscription you're using, and we can make sure you're on the right version of QuickBooks. Finally though, when you are ready and you've gone through those reports, always compare from one year to the next. That is your best way of understanding if everything's been included. Jumping between the different tax years and keeping an eye on them is your way of making sure that you're happy that everything's been included. And then when you're going through, look for obvious errors. Again, for me, income feels about right. Cost of goods services I probably want to look at. My car and van expenses I'm happy with. Happy with things like the rent and everything else that goes with it. But what I'm concerned about is this negative button here. I should never have a negative in my expenses. So I need to click in here and go through and find out what's moved on. And what it looks like is I've put some transactions in here that shouldn't be going into this area. If you do find a mistake and you want to adjust it, then click into a transaction, find the item that you're looking to change, and then you can edit the category at the top and that transaction will have changed. Or you can do multiple ones if that's gonna make it easier. Now I've gone through and edited even more, I'm starting to get more confident that I've got the right items in. And if you do feel like you're missing transactions, then don't be afraid to put them in manually. At the top here, we can add a transaction if we need to. And now I'm getting to a point where I'm more confident with it. So now I'm getting to a point where I feel like I've gone through each of these categories and everyone is correct. Do review your tax profile one more time. Make sure you put things like your hours per month in and tell us if you've already put a self-assessment li liability for last year. That's gonna give QuickBooks all the information it needs to keep on top of it. And also when you keep on top, you're gonna get your estimate tax right on the dashboard itself. And if you keep going at it, you'll see that you'll find everything will come into place. As you can see now, I've ticked off all of those items at the top. I've gone through, I've put everything I can and I'm now happy-ish that these figures are correct. This is gonna give me confidence now that things like this are in the right place. And there you have it. Use the information that QuickBooks has given you. Make sure you tick off all of those checklists. That's gonna give you a position where you're confident and comfortable that the information's correct. As you can see here, most of the information there now is looking good to me. This is what I was expecting to see all the information starting to flow. And this dashboard should be your indication 
that everything is as you expect. The last thing you need to do then is just go into reports and taxes and just review the boxes that are there. Make sure you're comfortable with what's in there. Make sure that everything you have that you're claiming for are expenses you'd be ex allowing going for there. When you've done that, then you're ready to go. If you do need someone to have a look at it, don't forget that people at Boffix, we're there to help you make sure you're happy with it. And we're happy to do those MOTs and actually give you a little video diary of us going through and looking at your figures. It was a pleasure to do this video for you. If you found this useful, don't forget to use that like and subscribe button. We've got plenty more videos like this to help make sure that you've got everything in place. Good luck at filing your tax return. Again, if you do need help, do shout up. Again, it's been a pleasure to do this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.